Okay, so you can start. Okay, so good afternoon. Uh, welcome to our session at 15 hours, uh, recent developments uh, in Malayavan calculus. Uh, I would like to thank the organizers uh, for this uh, nice uh, big conference, which brings together many mathematicians uh, in many fields. And today uh, we will continue to the tradition of probability type uh, sessions. Our first speaker is Professor Dergosophon. Uh, I like to briefly introduce him and um, uh, yeah, and give the stage to him. Uh, professor Dirkus Font is a professor of mathematics uh, specializing in probability uh, and stochastic modeling at Telecom Paris. Uh, his research focuses on fractional and punctual processes. Uh, now, uh, his talk uh, uh, will be on more recent developments, but Malayavan calculus uh, and their applications to the performance of evaluation of uh, telecommunication networks is also part of his research areas. So uh, uh, thank you very much uh, for accepting our invitation for this uh, parallel session. And uh, yeah, the stage is yours, Professor De Grosso Thank uh, you. You see my screen? Thank you. Yes, we do. Thank you. Okay, so my talk is about invertibility on Poisson space and Oaks processes. It's a joint work with uh, Laure Coutin. And, uh, oh, okay. Okay. Uh, so, to set the, the context, the framework of uh, this work, uh, consider on the winner space, the map, which sends the Brownian motion uh, sample path to the drifted uh, Brownian motion sample path. That means you, see, you associate B minus the integral from zero to dot of U dot S ds. U dot is uh, something which is adapted with a nice integrability uh, properties. And then on the other side, you consider the stochastic differential equation, which is Xt is equal to Bt plus the integral of zero to t of u dot xsds. So this, this seems to be two different things, but if you uh, look a bit closer, you see that it's equivalent to find x or to invert u. Because uh, if you have a solution to the differential equation, you can write it as u of x of t is equal to bt. That means that x is the inverse of u. And you have this sort of equivalence between uh, invert a map or solve a differential equation. And uh, very recently, uh, Ustuner and then two of his uh, uh, PhD students uh, show that u is invertible if and only if the relative entropy between the Wiener measure mu and the image measure of mu by the map u is equal to uh, a kinetic energy, uh, the kinetic energy of u dot. So this gives a very nice and very simple uh, criterion for u to be invertible. And uh, it also first gives an, a new criterion to find some uh, solution of, uh, of singular SD. So you have many applications. You have a variational representation of the entropy you can explain what is the innovation conjecture and you, have, uh, you can uh, look very closely at uh, solutions of singular uh, stochastic differential equation. Well, the, the main tool for this is the uh, Gersonov theorem. So what does say the Gersonov theorem? It says that if you have a probability measure which is equivalent to mu, you know there exists a u dot such that bt plus the integral from zero to t of u dot s ds is a new Brownian motion. And you have uh, the, a 
precise uh, formula for the radon nicotine derivative of nu with respect to mu. So uh, the important thing here is that you have a transformation of a sample path and a change of probability measure which compensate each other so that the new process under the new probability measure has the distribution of B under his initial distribution. That's a very, very, uh, very uh, precise content of this theorem. And the question is now, uh, can we do something like this on the Poisson process on R plus? Uh, is it interesting? What can we say? Uh, and uh, that, that is the question we are uh, going to, to, to ask here. So you take N, a Poisson process of intensity one, and you denote that by pi its distribution. Uh, okay. And for uh, dot Y predictable and uh, non-negative, you consider Y, which is its uh, first integral. And uh, Y star, ah, here it is. It's him. Y star, which is the inverse, uh, the time inverse of Y. And we remark that Y star of T is a stopping time. Okay. And there is a, a very equivalent uh, theorem, uh, Gersonov theorem, which is almost the same as the uh, Gersonov theorem for Poisson proce for Wiener process. Strangely enough, we didn't find any uh, any representation of this theorem in the literature. So if you take nu, which is uh, equivalent to pi, you know that there exists y dot, non-negative, uh, positive, such uh, if we change the time of uh, n, n is a Poisson process, you change time by looking, it, looking at it at time uh, y star of t, then y is a unit Poisson process on the new probability measure. The little uh, additional difficulty is that you have to change the filtration because Y is adapted to the filtration F, change of time, F uh, Y star. So you have this, uh, this formula which gives you the radon equilibrium of D nu over D pi uh, at time Y star of T. Okay, so now you have something very nice. Uh, you can you can see that uh, if uh, the filtration uh, with respect to which uh, y is adapted, which is f y star, you can ask whether or not it's the minimum filtration uh, generated by the sample path of y. It turns out that no, it isn't. You have to add uh, the filtration generated by y star to recover the full uh, filtration. But if you uh, have time change, which are very regular, that means they are finite for any s, and they goes to infinity for uh, when n at t goes to infinity, then the terminal filtration are the same. F y star infinite and F, F infinite are the same. The question is, is there any hope to have equality between the uh, filtration generated by y and f y star. This is a question we left, we leave, uh, into, we leave for open for now. So what about uh, invertibility? So you consider what you have n, the sample path of a Poisson process, and then you change time uh, in n. That means instead of n, you uh, consider the process y, which is n uh, looked up at time y star of t. That change the, uh, this changes the speed at which we discover the rate, the atoms of N. And there's a theorem which is uh, purely algebraic. You just write out what is the composition of uh, two transformation. And there is a dot Z, a dot Z, uh, such that C uh, composed with Y is identity, if only, if and only if, Z star of Y and T is Y of N and T. 
So this is very easy to uh, prove. Oh. What happens? I don't know. Uh, this is not uh, preview. Uh, okay. Sorry. Presentation. I'm coming back. Okay. But I don't see I I ah okay. Yeah, came back. No? It's white, it's it's a I don't understand what happens. Uh, I see correctly. The file. Do you see something? No, you don't. You don't see anything. Not now. Uh, I see correctly the file on my computer, but when I share the screen. Now we can see your screen. Hox and invertibility. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I was there. Okay. okay. So, uh, okay. So, if you remember the, the question, uh, which was here, uh, uh, can we have uh, equality between the two filtration? The thing is that we have equality between the two filtration if and only if y is left invertible. So this is one uh, one thing that means that we can retrieve y star from the observation uh, which is y, and then n since uh, n of t is y of y star star of t is y of y t. So uh, in this situation, if y is indefinable, you can retrieve everything n and y star from the observation y. Okay. So there is something which is very well known in uh, the settings of um, Poisson process. Uh, these are Oaks processes. They are used in uh, finance, uh, biology, and uh, seismology, and so on and so forth. The Oaks process it's a, is a counting process whose compensator depends on itself. That means that x of t minus y of x and t is a local martingale. And you have on the right, you have uh, an example of uh, of a sample path of uh, uh, Oaks process. This is the dots which are here uh, for, for given uh, for this particular form of uh, Y. And uh, there is a theorem which says that uh, Y is invertible if and only if there exists the Oaks process Z such that Z is equal to N of Y of Z on T. That means that if you remember what I said at the, in the introduction, that uh, when you have a map U on the winner space, which is invertible, uh, it demands to uh, ask whether or not, whether a particular uh, stochastic differential has a solution or not. Here, this is the same thing. That means the analog on Poisson space is if a map is invertible, that means do we have an Oaks process which corresponds to this map? That means that if we, uh, all the questions we could ask on a stochastic differential equation, we can ask them on uh, Oaks processes. And it doesn't seem to be, uh, to have been addressed uh, so far. In particular, you can define the notion of weak Oaks process, strong Oaks process, uh, Martingale Oaks process, and so on and so forth. And then you can uh, prove uh, a sort of Yamada Watanabe theorem. That is, if there exists a weak Ox process, and if the Ox process has a strong uniqueness, then there exists a strong Ox solution to the Ox, uh, to the problem to the Ox problem. That means that you have you have a strong solution. You give you are given n, you are given y, and you can find a z, a z which satisfies this equality. Uh, in particular. Uh, if uh, for this particular uh, form of uh, y dot uh, with h, which is an integral, uh, which has an integral uh, strictly less than one, 
you retrieve that there is a strong Hox process. Actually, the, the usual construction yields, yields only a weak solution uh, of this problem, but here you can uh, you obtain that you have a strong solution. So you have already you also have uh, anthropic criterion, uh, which is equivalent to uh, which is the analog of what we have on the Venus space. That means the, the map Y is invertible if only if and only if its uh, relative entropy with respect to pi uh, satisfies uh, the, uh, something which is uh, something like an entropy because M uh, is something is a function which is convex and uh, which is an orange type function, so it's some sort of entropy of uh, Y star Y dot star. So it's very, uh, it's a very same thing uh, as for the Wiener process. And this is a work in progress. Uh, there is a, a conjecture which is highly likely, it's just a matter of time uh, before we set it. Uh, if f is integrable enough, uh, we will have this uh, kind of result for the binational rep representation of the uh, entropy. And uh, just to mention that the current proof of, proof of this uh, uh, identity requires F to be bounded and uses a Poisson measure instead of a Poisson process. And it is, it is known from the work of Ustunen and Hartmann that the entropy criterion uh, yields weaker assumptions on F. So it's just a matter of time before we, uh, we get this result. And I'm finished. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, now we have uh, like two, three minutes for questions uh, from uh, chat. We can take questions from the audience or question and answer part uh, that can, the panelists can see. Can, can you uh, apply this to the transport problem? Uh, actually, there is really uh, not transport problem here because you are in, in one dimension. So there is the, the transport problem is trivial. The, the change of time is actually a transport problem. Uh, I missed the beginning. Is it only in one dimensional case? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You need to have time. You need to have a, 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 a time index to have all the filtration, Martingale stuff, and so on and so forth. Change of time uh, doesn't work uh, when you don't have a time. Uh, One-dimensional problem. So for two-dimensional person process, for instance, a person process with one-dimensional time but two-dimensional state. Uh, is this, um, this is not yet done, but it will be done, and it's it's. Uh, you know, you, when you when you look at the work of Zhang, is uh, using typically a, a, a point process on R plus with marks, uh -huh. and uh, to invert to to prove the variational representation of entropy. Actually, he uses uh, optimal transportation between different distribution of marks. Yes, that's it. It's, it's just. Uh, but here we were we wanted to work only in one dimension with. One plus point was one person point process. Okay, so if you take a, a process with a, a Gaussian component plus a jump, oh, it will work. This would be interesting. Yeah, but it, it will be uh, the next step is to do it for a mark point mark Poisson process to be able to uh, treat Levy processes. Yes. And then you can do the Gaussian part and you have the full Levy processes. If you put a Gaussian component, does it behave better or not? This was the question. In the minimization problem, for instance, you don't have any expectation here. I don't know. Honestly, I don't know. Like right now, I don't know. Because you're, you're, you... It's not the same thing because on the Gaussian part, you change the sample path, and the Poisson yeah. part, you change the you change the time. You, yes. So you have the two effects together. Yes. Yeah. 
I, I don't know how it will be mixed, uh, if it will mix you know, you know, this may be interesting because uh, it, it is uh, totally orthogonal, but uh, you know, to explain the Feynman integrals, they use Poisson random variables. Although they treat the case with Laplacian. Uh -huh. Maslow theory of uh -huh. Feynman integrals. Uh, there is a kind of, uh, I don't know, the, let's say duality, I don't know which word to choose, but uh, I don't know, you may always, uh, you may wish. Okay, thank you. Anyway, that's all. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much uh, for this nice discussion as well. Now let's move on on our schedule and we, we will have this la last 20 minutes maybe for more questions and answers. Now, uh, our next speaker is Ihsan Demirel. Uh, he finished his master's at Bilkent University, uh, starting uh, analysis on Wiener space, but now he topped it with a PhD work, almost finished soon. Uh, so his title today uh, is Regularity of Monge Bernier Potentials and Monge Ampere Equation on Wiener space. Yeah, the stage is yours. Thank you, Sir Charlotte. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, today I am going to talk about the regularity of Monge potentials and Monge Ampere equation. Uh, I will start with uh, uh, I will start with uh, um, uh, stating Monge problem and on which setting you are working on. In the second part of question uh, presentation I will show that regular of uh, backward potential. Uh, we start with uh, uh, some special case where uh, potentials are smooth, then we will uh, uh, work with more general setting. And finally, we will uh, show that uh, much potential solve much ampere equation. Uh, much problem, uh, let rho and nu be two probability measure on measurable set x and y and we have cost function which is, which is positive and can take uh, infinity value. The aim of the Monge problem is to minimize the total cost, which is given by uh, uh, inter integral of cost function with respect to some um, joint measure on x, y. We want to minimize this function over the uh, cost of joint measure. Uh, so that uh, first marginal of this measure will be rho and second marginal of mm, this joint measure will be nu. Uh, our setting, uh, we work with uh, abstract Wiener space. It is infinite dimensional gauge space. And our cost function uh, has a quadratic form. And yeah, initial and target measures are, are absolutely continuous with respect, respect to Wiener measure with positive density. Under this, uh, uh, here F and G satisfy some conditions as first condition uh, is two integral is finite. Here, Navla denotes the gross Sobolev derivative, which is uh, L2 ex extension of uh, directional uh, the, uh, directive in direction of H. Uh, thanks to this condition, we know that uh, the function we want to minimize is an um, infimum, infimum is finite. Moreover, we know that they, thanks to this condition, this number operator is, is closable operator. And second assumption is that F is one C converse function, which is uh, which means that uh, uh, this function values map is convex function. Uh, under this setting, we know that solution exists, which is which Fayel uh, and Ustinel uh, proved this result. Uh, it is actually. Uh, to, for more general case, um, 
Moreover, we can characterize this solution by some one convex function. This function is not unique, but it is derivative is always unique. Uh, uh, optimal uh, solution to most problem given as a image measure of rho under the under this map identity times t and t is given by identity on w plus nabla phi. Uh, um, also this map t is invertible and you also can we can also characterize this inverse map by uh, the, uh, some element in D21. And this phi, uh, phi and psi are called back, uh, forward and backward more much potentials. Uh, we are interested in, we are interested in the regular of backward much pot potential in sense that uh, phi belongs to Sobolev space D22. We already know that it is in D21. We will start with a uh, smooth case. In that case, uh, uh, su sufficient condition for smooth potentials uh, as follows. F and G are smooth and bounded function. Mu is uh, standard Gauss measure on, which means we are uh, we are uh, work on finite dimensional space. Uh, under this setting, uh, uh, forward po potential satisfies this relation. Uh, on the le left hand side, you, uh, uh, you see that derivative of phi and um, derivative of densities and uh, please note that these functions are hash valued. Uh, this function uh, um, is Hilbert Schwitt operator valued random variable. Using this result, we show that um, semi, semi norm of nabla square psi is bounded. Mm. Uh, actually, I will give the idea of proof of first proposition. And we start with this formula. We want uh, infimum, we take the infimum over all measure on W, and we know that infimum is attained at nu. We start with um, parameterizing this function with vector fields. Uh, when we do that, this infimum is attained at uh, nabla phi. Uh, so if we take uh, directional derivative of k at nabla phi, it should be zero. From this um, uh, fact, we derive proposition, proposition one. Uh, now we want to gen generalize our result. Rem remember the general case. Uh, we have two probability measures which are uh, absolutely continuous with respect to the inner measure. F satisfies this uh, assumption and F is one convex function. Uh, under these assumptions, we know that uh, lambda square psi is in L2, and we can estimate its norm by um, we can estimate it by uh, forward mode potential and density densities of uh, initial and target measure. Uh, Idea of proof, we want to use proposition, proposition two, so we approximate F and G by a regularization. In first step, we take conditional expectation. This sigma algebra is generated by a random variable, which are obtained by 
applying uh, divergent operator to first n element of Hilbert uh, orthonormal basis of phi, uh, we can consider Fn as a function on Rn. In second step, we apply uh, einstein uhlenbeck semi group. Uh, in second step, we obtain a smooth function on Rn. In third step, we multiply density by some compact supported function. Uh, uh, this new function is continuous and compact supported, which means it is bounded. And final steps, uh, in, in, in the third step, we lost strictly positive uh, assumption. So we just add some little numbers, so our density is again positive. Uh, we, we, we will work with some subsequence of this Fn M cal L, which is obtained by applying diagonal method three times. And again, we will donate this subsequence by Fn. And similarly, we, we can define Gn. So, uh, let phi n and um, psi n be potential to Monge problem with initial and target measure given by this. Uh, this measures satisfy assumption two. So we have uh, this inequality. And finally, if we take the limit, we see that uh, semi norm is bounded, which implies regular of backward Monge potential. Uh, and lastly, we show that the uh, relation of uh, backward Monge potential with Monge Ampere equation. On Rn, Monge Ampere equation can be written as a this form. However, this determinant is not well defined in infinite dimensional settings. Uh, so, uh, on W, Monge Ampere equation can be written as this form. Here, determinant to denote Kalaman flat horn determinant, and L denotes Orstein Uhlenberg operator. Uh, we show that, show that um, backward mount potential solves Monge Ampere equation on the inner space. Uh, idea of proof is um, similar to proposition one. Um, we start with some you know, finite dimension. We start with finite dimensional settings and uh, show the general result result by um, we did, um, using limit arguments and. This is the end of my presentation. Uh, you can see existence of that in this paper by Andan Üstünel. And thank you for listening. Thank you, Isan. So for all. Uh, uh, for everybody, yeah, the stage is open for questions. Uh, we have five minutes or four minutes left uh, in this time slot. Any questions from the audience? Um, well, yeah, in this system, I think we have a question and answer uh, place that we can see questions from the audience, but of course you can write uh, over the chat as well. We have several participants. Uh, okay, there are five attendees, also from the panelists. Um, okay. So I think we'll wait like three or four more minutes uh, to have the next talk uh, to start on time.
because there may be switches from one session to another. Uh, attendees may freely move from one session to another. Therefore, let's wait uh, five more minutes, please.
All right. So now that we're all here, uh, let's start the next talk. Uh, I, this next talk is will be given by myself. Uh, let me introduce myself briefly. I'm a uh, faculty member uh, at Koch University in Istanbul. Uh, my research uh, field is uh, stochastic processes, uh, in particular, or lately, let me say, uh, stochastic flows and uh, weak solution of some SDEs. Uh, we have this new uh, work uh, based on uh, Professor Ustunel's uh, previous foundation type uh, papers. Uh, its title is uh, Hedging in a Degenerate Market in brief. Uh, so let me share my screen and uh, we may have uh, time for questions and answers. So, okay, uh, here we are. Okay, I hope you can see my screen now, right? So uh, in more expanded form, my title is Hedging Portfolio for a Degenerate Market Model. And this is joint work with Istan Demirel, the previous speaker, and our main speaker today, Professor Üstünel, Ali Süleyman Üstünel of Bilkent University. So uh, there will be three parts. So this will be a brief... Uh, Speak, uh, talk, uh, we will be introducing the market model. Uh, we'll talk about usual Gersano's theorem. Uh, however, the main part of the talk, which will be the contribution uh, of this work, it's a Clark formula and uh, how do we use it for hedging uh, a portfolio. We will have two brief examples that might help uh, understanding the essence of this work. So the market model is kind of classical, uh, in the classical winner space anyways, uh, consider a diffusion, uh, but there will be n plus one of them, uh, a risk-free asset, xt naught, with price dynamics of uh, this type, a deterministic equation, and R happens to be the rate of risk or interest rate. There will be n risky assets with price dynamics of a diffusion. Uh, the, this is a Markov uh, version of a general, actually, diffusion process that we might have introduced where the drift and the diffusion parameters could have depended on the whole path of the process. But for our purposes, this will work. And let us illustrate the ideas over this maybe simplified uh, version of the model. Now let W be an n-dimensional Brownian motion. And let us, again, for simplicity in this case, or for particular results, as, assume that the drift in the diffusion parameters or functions satisfy linear growth and Lipschitz conditions so that we have a strong solution of this equation. Now, the difference from ordinary analysis uh, with such models, market models in finance, uh, we could actually just tell that the diffusion X is possibly degenerate in the sense that sigma, sigma transpose can be a singular matrix for some X. So the, the diffusion uh, matrix uh, has this typical, okay, special uh, property that all this talk is based on. Now, we have just spoken that strong solution is assumed, of course, trivially, in that case, the filtration generated by the process X will be a subset of the filtration generated by the driving winner process. Now, Malayavin calculus for degenerate diffusions have been lately uh, developed by Ustunel in 2020 paper, which is based on the Martingale representation 
result uh, of 2019, which has already appeared. So our motivation is to use the Malyavin calculus uh, for degenerate diffusions to develop a hedging portfolio as an application of this basic work. Now the value process, let us remind the market model completely to everybody, uh, theta and theta t naught denote the number of shares of an assets and risk free asset respectively. They should be adapted processes. In this case, the value process is given by this combination of uh, strategies multiplied by the prices of the uh, stock prices. Okay, and the portfolio or uh, hedging strategy uh, will be the other name that we give to these. Would, uh, we will assume that they have to be self-financing. So self-financing means this equation where the dif uh, differential of the value will be actually in total the differentials of the uh, shares we hold in the risk free asset and the mar uh, stock prices, stock uh, market. Now we can rewrite the value process as a, uh, the di differential equation that it satisfies uh, in this form. All right, where the driving drift and the diffusion processes are there, R is the interest rate, uh, which we can for simplicity take as non-random deterministic. And we have our driving uh, Brownian motion. All right, now, of course, it is kind of typical to uh, consider an equivalent martingale measure. Is this market arbitrage free? Uh, the market price of risk process is U, so the so-called market price of risk process is given as U in this equation. And if this has no solution, the market cannot be arbitrage free. So these are classical and basic information that you can find in finance uh, books, right? However, possibly this could have a unique solution and uh, if the market is not degenerate, meaning sigma sigma transpose is invertible, uh, and if there is a unique solution, we call the market to be arbitrage free anyways. There is no arbitrage. Okay, these we know from our basic uh, knowledge. However, if we have many solutions to this equation, uh, the recent work, uh, of Ustunel in 2019 and 20 imply that a projection, orthogonal projection to the range space of sigma transpose of xt can be used to project any solution u and that will be unique. So pxt times uxt uh, projection matrix times the u vector will be a unique vector that can be shown by actual simple algebra as well. All right, now the equivalent martingale measure as usual. So let's go for uh, move forward a little bit uh, with again, uh, basic results. Uh, let's for simplicity consider time to be one, uh, the time horizon to be zero to one rather than an arbitrary capital T. Uh, so uh, this, uh, Okay, Rodon Nicodem derivative Z will be used uh, to check if there is an equivalent martingale measure. Q in this not, uh, slide denoted by Q. And if expected to value of Z1 is one, then Z is a martingale as known, as very well known. And Q measure is given as expect uh, by change of measure with Z by Gusnow's theorem. Now the equivalent Martin measure Q and uh, W tilde will be the pair we are going to use for analyzing uh, a hedging portfolio. W tilde given here, which is written in terms of the projection operator that we have just spoken about, 
is the Brownian motion under the probability measure Q. Now, the discounted value process can be written to set as, uh, as a solution of this stochastic differential equation, but this time written by uh, the we, uh, Brownian motion W tilde. Now, the discounted value process is here, uh, written again just as a discount uh, the, of financial discount of value process V, the original one, and it satisfies the backwards stochastic differential equation given here uh, once we know the value at time one, V1 of theta. Of course, V1 depends on this hedging strategy theta. Therefore, the discounted version U1 is given like this as well. So one is our terminal time. Now, uh, here is the main part of the talk. Uh, using the integral representation uh, that have been developed recently, uh, and the Ito Clark formula that has been developed recently in Istana's work mm -hmm. to find the hedging portfolio. Now consider a payoff function G, which is an which is assumed to be a form measurable and integrable. Now we need an integral representation of G with respect to W tilde so that we can equate the relevant equations or expressions to reveal a hedging strategy. So as I have just said, it took like formula for degenerate diffusions uh, of the recent work of Ustunel is to be developed further now with respect to W tilde uh, and we can uh, easily solve for uh, theta, which is our hedging strategy. Now this theorem, this basic theorem is given in this slide. Uh, you can see the Ito Clark type representation uh, of F, which is in M21. Now, let's talk about this new, uh, okay, Malyaban calculus for specifically for degenerate diffusions a little bit. M21 is the set of functionals of X where this integral, Nabla hat squared or uh, twice integrability of Nabla hat. Uh, in a sense, where Nabla hat is solely a derivative, but for degenerate diffusions functionals. So I think I've just missed that, but it is the ordinary Nabla, uh, Nabla which is uh, gross solely derivative, is conditional expectation with respect to f1 of x will be the basic tool to define Nabla hat. Okay, now d hat is also a, a typical notation, but this time just the Lebesgue uh, derivative, uh, derivative with respect to the Lebesgue measure of Nabla hat. So d hat will be used in this sense. Uh, now our main theorem simply tells us that if f is in f1, is an f1 of x measurable, uh, functional of x, uh, and we have we can it, it is uh, it has uh, it is it's gross Sobolev derivative, but for particular uh, degenerate diffusions, Nabla hat version uh, is applicable. Then th we can write f in this form, where we can see the operators d hats explicitly projection over the range space of the diffusion matrix, which is P of XS. And we can see the conditional expectations with respect to the equivalent Martingale measure Q, with respect to the filtration of X. And the integral here is with respect to the Brownian motion, which is a Brown a W tilde, which is with respect to the filtration of X again. So this whole formula is just one step ahead of the basic Ito Clark formula developed by Ustinel 2020 that I have just shown in, a, in former slides. 
Okay, what is the use of that? Uh, we can find the hedging portfolio as a result because we can already write the value process with respect to as, as an integral with respect to the W tilde, which is a Brownian motion uh, under the equivalent Martingale measure. Now we and we have this expression again as an integral with respect to Brownian motion W tilde. Okay, so from Ito Clark formula, we can consider these two expressions where, okay, in this case, consider value at one, a payoff function g, a function of x at that time given to us, then we can find theta hat according, right? Ito Clark formula on one side, from the model on the other side. Once you equate these to each other, the hedging portfolio is found to solve this equation shown on the slide. So sigma star, again, let me remind that denotes the transpose of the diffusion matrix. Theta T star is just the column vector form of the uh, strategies. Okay, which was already written as a row vector for simplicity in the previous slides, but basically what we are trying to solve is for theta. You can see the operator d hat recently developed, uh, for which is also valid for the general diffusions. G is our payoff function once again, and phi of t is just shorthand here, which includes the projection uh, operator P, uh, actually twice, as you can see in this case. All right, so we have an explicit uh, equation uh, for theta. And when I say equation, it's basically on the left-hand side, the degeneracy is obvious in the following sense. If sigma sigma transpose was invertible, of course, you could multiply both sides of this equation by sigma, invert it, and find the answer, right? But since that matrix, sigma sigma transpose, is not invertible, we are in the degenerate case, so we have to search for any solutions of this equation. All right, if there are many, you can project it with P of X. That will be a unique result that you can use for the hedging purposes in finance applications. So having talked about applications, my last two minutes will be on examples, uh, very short examples actually, and maybe simplified if you uh, see those. The linear model uh, with two risky assets only. Uh, and let's, simplify further that the drift function and the diffusion function just depend on time. In the previous setup, I haven't made these functions depend on time. However, that, that could just follow the same way. So the previous uh, results are valid if uh, these two functions depended on time separately. Uh, and now they just depend on time, not on the uh, market uh, processes axis. So uh, in this case, the projection uh, onto the range space of sigma transpose uh, will be easily written explicitly in this form. Okay, we're using the parameters of the above uh, example. And the d hat happens to be uh, D hat applied to projection of U, the market price uh, risk price of risk process U, uh, which is quite central in this analysis, uh, will be just zero. In this case, the formula is somewhat simplified. Hedging portfolio will be hedging portfolio theta will be the solution of this equation here. And it is quite simplified when you think about our for former expression in the theorem. Now, uh, okay, the projection operator is obvious 
at the center, but it's uh, the Q, the equivalent uh, martingale measure, also includes uh, projection of excess and multiplied by U, which is the market price of risk process. Okay, now the this is an explicit or maybe more implicit result in the sense that G is not specified. But finally, G could have been specified as an Asian call option with floating strike, where capital K is just a constant. And the time, oh, this is the maximum of zero and this difference. There's a time average of the price process. And like an European option type, Mm -hmm. uh, okay, okay, expression right here. So I should conclude my talk uh, pretty soon. Uh, D hat is in this form. D hat of G is in this form. Uh, so it includes uh, the operator D hat applied to the price processes at time S and at time T, finally. Uh, so therefore you can, we can actually also find in the linear model the hat of the price process explicitly like this and it can be put uh, to the equation to find the hedging portfolio. Okay, uh, I, I think uh, I have used time over, uh, I have used over time, I have, I'm sorry for that. Uh, these are our references. Uh, thank you very much for listening. Okay, I have to apologize uh, from our main speaker. <laughs> uh, so I will take any questions at the last part if there's extra time after our main speaker talks. Um, so let me introduce Professor Ustunen, who is our main speaker today. Uh, so I have actually participated in the morning's probability session. Uh, therefore, I will repeat the same words. It's hard for me to introduce Professor Stune because uh, he is one of the developers of analysis on linear space. He is the author of uh, many uh, papers. He is the recipient of many awards and. Uh, he's the co-author of books and articles. Uh, so I think we, I'm going to just say that he has joined Bikant University lately after Telecom Party, his career in France. Uh, so it is our pleasure to have him in this session. Uh, I think uh, maybe in, from the Turkish word of T, uh, okay. Professors of professors, thank you so much <laughs> for accepting this invitation. Thank you, thank you. Uh, I will uh, try to speak. Uh, well, uh, Mine uh, has done essentially the most applicable part, so I will try to be complimentary in what I am going to say. I am sorry for my handwriting because, you know, uh, I was using uh, some uh, Macintosh system uh, while I was in Ankara, but when I have come to here, I have been obliged to put some Linux stuff and combining it with uh, uh, iPad, etc. It is for me at least impossible. So I will be using some PDF files that I have prepared today and yesterday, and uh, we shall see. So uh, the thing is that. Uh, here, uh, I will take uh, a diffusion uh, process which is given as the solution of a very uh, simple stochastic differential equation where uh, B and sigma are uh, smooth functions from uh, B over from Rn to Rn and sigma is from Rn to matrices of dimension n times t. And uh, I suppose they, that they have all nice properties in order not to have problems of solution. So I will, uh, then it is known that uh, in this case, uh, 
we have uh, ito representation uh, property for the functionals uh, of these processes. Uh, sorry, I am trying to also uh, use the, but it doesn't uh, obey to my comments. Uh, So, uh, and so if you have a screen integrable, a random variable, in fact, uh, equivalence class of random variables, which are, which is measurable with respect to uh, sigma algebra, final sigma algebra of the uh, above diffusion process, then we have a representation theorem a la Ito. So it can be written as the expectation of this functional plus a stochastic integral of a certain process which is measurable with respect to, uh, which is adapted to the filtration of the diffusion process and uh, it is corrected with the orthogonal projection uh, that Mina was talking about, uh, which is the orthogonal projection from uh, uh, R to the, the D to the sigma star of XS applied to R to the N. Uh, the latter being a finite dimensional subspace of the initial one. So this is always well defined. And this representation, uh, although the alpha is not unique, P applied to alpha is unique. Okay, so the question is how to calculate this alpha? So as Mine has indicated, this alpha can be calculated with a, uh, using a new uh, derivation uh, operator, uh, which is uh, uh, which is defined here. In fact, if xt is uh, the diffusion process at a fixed instant t, then I define it is head derivative in the direction h being that element of the Camino Martin space of the underlying Brownian motion as the conditional expectation of the normal Sobolev derivative or the so-called Malyavent derivative, although Malyavent has nothing to do with this, uh, of xt, then smoothed with respect to final sigma algebra of the diffusion process. Here I am working about, I'm working uh, with the unit interval zero one. My final time is one, initial time is zero, okay? So uh, once that you have this, then uh, uh, so, uh, then when you look at this, it doesn't seem like a derivative first, uh, but uh, when you uh, try to play with it a little bit, uh, then you see that, uh, in fact, if you restrict this, uh, let's say, smoothed derivative, well, it is a little bit pretentious to say derivative already, uh, it is a closable operator on the cylindrical functions, uh, which are the functions of the diffusion paths. So uh, this is an uh, elementary calculation, so I will not enter into the details of this. And uh, if uh, then you complete these cylindrical functions with respect to LP norms, you obtain some reasonable Sobolev spaces. Uh, that I will denote with M21, the case which is the most frequently used, and with this we can calculate the missing term in the Ito representation theorem as to be the projection operator excess, which is already defined, then the smooth uh, conditional expectation of 
the Lebesgue density of nabla hat f uh, at the point s and uh, then it is suited with respect to uh, sigma algebra fs via, via the conditional expectation and stochastic integral with respect to db the process defining the initial diffusion process okay so uh, you have seen already the applications by mine of this to financial problems and i will just give a small application to logarithmic sobolev inequality so the thing is that uh, well uh, if you uh, first application will be of course the first step uh, zero step of log sobolev is Poincare inequality so uh, well it is straightforward from the above formula that when you take the L2 norm of the F distance uh, minus it's a it is average then it is L2 norm is bounded with this operator so with this quantity here uh, uh, here Px is uh, with double bar is the action of the projection operator on the Cameron Martin vectors, which is defined like that. Okay, and the rest is already defined. And uh, then uh, we have then this log Sobolev inequality. Sorry, in order to go down on the pages, I have to stop screen sharing you know this is incompatibility with linux so uh, i'm not uh, really responsible for this okay so uh, we can also conjecture that the logarithmic sobolev inequality corresponding to our situation is the uh, following one well expectation of f square times log f square divided by its uh, expectation of its square is dominated by this twice expectation of p times nabla hat f square as you see here in fact that is a justice because if p goes to zero it means that your system is becoming totally degenerate or deterministic hence your uh, expectation of your function is equal to a function itself hence this gives you at the right hand side zero and the, the left hand side is zero also okay because of this difference so uh, it seems that when well, this form of logarithmic sobolev inequality completes a gap between the deterministic and non-deterministic case this is the first uh, observation the second of, uh, observation is the situation where number you we are dealing with a process whose uh, sobolev derivative is essentially bounded so you know this means essentially that we are working with stochastic differential equations whose diffusion coefficients are constants okay so i take a stochastic differential equation which is given here with this here b is a, a vector field which is lipschitz vector field sigma is a constant matrix of dimension uh, d times n uh, n times d sorry uh, and then it is easy to see in this case then that the uh, Sobolev derivative of xt and it is smoothed version also are bounded by exponential kt this is just the uh, Gromwell lemma okay so there is nothing deep here uh, nevertheless uh, nevertheless when you come uh, to the logarithmic Sobolev inequality uh, well this is for instance uh, i mean the people use very often the situation where we are dealing with the law of the fixed instant of the solution of the stochastic differential equation as we, they deal with the uh, functions f of x1 
let's say one or 25, I, it doesn't matter. So with using this estimation, we have already logarithmic Sobolev inequality for the uh, probability density function of X1. Uh, I'm just writing it in expectation form, but you can translate it as F squared times Y, F squared of Y times logarithm F squared of Y, PY dy, P being the density is twice, etc. Okay, so this thing, of course, this is not very difficult, but here I don't need to use a fixed time of x. I, it is true also on all the trajectories here with the Sobolev derivative of uh, capital F of uh, x with uh, Sobolev derivative with a hat. But uh, for the applications, you uh, searched by the analysts, the uh, temporal uh, estimations of this kind are very appreciated. That's why I have written it like that. Okay, so let me give an application of this application. <coughs> let xt be a solution of the following stochastic differential e equation again. B is a Lipschitz vector field. M is also a vector field and sigma is a constant matrix. Here M is not Lipschitz, but it is monotone in the sense of monotone operator, okay? Hence, uh, in this case, you know that uh, we know how to solve these equations. We use, uh, you see the approximation of the, for the monotone function, which happens to be at the same time monotone and Lipschitz with a bad Lipschitz constant, but uh, when you want to estimate the derivative of this approximating solution, this, uh, the derivative of x and t, and is the, uh, x and is the approximating the uh, solution with the Yosida approximation to m, you obtain again the same bound on the Sobolev derivative of the solution without any dependence on m thanks to the monotonicity. Because in the Grandval lemma, it gives a negative constant when you want to calculate lambda hat h xt square, naught. Okay, then uh, this, this is a very, very precious information. It means that you can pass to the limit. And the limit, again, satisfies the same estimate here, okay? So once then you apply this to the functions, uh, you, you have a Sobol logarithmic Sobolev inequality for this kind of functions and for solutions and for their limits. So let's apply this application of application to the final application, which is the Dyson's Browning motion. Okay, so let me uh, take x as the solution of the following stochastic differential equation, where it's equal to uh, this uh, xi is the i component. It's given as b of xi t dt times sigma dpt. Sigma is again a deterministic uh, uh, vector. Well, this is not well written. I could have written sigma i j d b j, something like that, plus then gamma times this sum where this is one over xi minus xj at the dt. Okay, this is the famous dyson Brownian motion. So here uh, the monotone function comes from the f of x, which is defined as the logarithm of xi minus xj from its derivative. In fact, for i different than j, for i less, strictly less than j, uh, on the set, uh, on the simplex, uh, d dimensional simplex x1 less than x2 etc and it is minus infinity otherwise okay so when i take its uh, derivative in the sense of the convex uh, analysis uh, we obtain the above equation and uh, so uh, applying then the same procedure that we have already done we obtain immediately logarithmic Sobolev inequality for the solution of this 
Dyson uh, Brownian motion, which is in this world. Okay, so uh, this is even on the trajectories of X, there is an head here, but it doesn't matter because head is always less than or equal to without head. So for any, you have this equation for inequality for any G cylindrical function. And in particular, the, the, if you take any temporal law of X uh, at X1, let's say at one, then uh, even this thing is new in the application. Okay, so as you see, there are uh, still some potential applications of these results, uh, especially these results can be generalized as Mine mentioned already to the uh, non-homogeneous case because you can always homogenize a non-homogeneous process uh, by sacrificing about the non-degeneracy. That's precisely what we are doing here. Uh, this is an exercise in the book of Pulimental and Kittur, at the second or first chapter, I think, okay? And the second thing is that this is also uh, easily ex uh, expandable to the infinite dimensional case. And the third one, of course, uh, it is the situation on the manifolds. Well, uh, for instance, uh, you can do almost the same calculations to show that uh, you have similar kind of inequalities for the Brownian motion on the Lie groups, compact Lie groups. Okay, so I will stop here. I don't know if I have uh, violated your time interval. I hope not. So if you have any questions, I will be glad to answer. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. So, uh, it, it, that was a very nice talk, uh, shorter than maybe the time slot, but definitely I think it was very inspiring. We have participants also from attendees. Uh, let's see if they have any questions. Uh, yeah. Um, right, any questions from the audience? Um, uh, maybe I, I have one question uh, from the part where you had an interesting interpretation uh, where you showed the first application. Uh, you said there is this log so bad of inequality if there is uh, there's some justice if it is deterministic, uh -huh. right? Zero yeah. equals zero. I mean, yeah. would you elaborate on that part? I couldn't see the uh, zero part. Log one is zero, right? But what, where does the uh, zero come from in the deterministic case? Well, uh, uh, if p goes to zero, you p said. goes to zero. p goes to zero. So left yeah. hand side and right hand side equal at the exactly. uh, deterministic yeah. case, right? Yeah. Okay, okay, yeah. I got that. Right. Thank you. Uh -huh. Well, any questions? Any uh, anything? for previous talks is also possible now that we have time. Uh, yeah. Okay, we'll wait by like 30 uh, seconds. Uh, yeah. Missed. Okay, talk, we open. Open. Okay, uh, there are some uh, questions uh, in the question and answer part. Uh, for let me uh, thank you. Oh, by the way, for all the uh, participants, thank you for your patience because it was only now that I was able to discover these questions. There are no open and answered questions for the panelists. Would you please look at question and answer section? Uh, there are dismissed five uh, comments. Uh, Teresa said, I cannot talk, right? Uh, what is the Lee group used? And finally, how do you incorporate the curvature? But that must be from elsewhere, yeah, I guess, right? Okay. 
like so these are not for us no no okay that's oh, that's okay then so this is our first day uh, learning uh, the technicalities yeah <laughs> okay so uh, I think it is time to then uh, close our session uh, I believe there are no questions from the floor uh, thank you very much for accepting our invitation thank you to the organizers as well for giving us this uh, chance uh, to hold our session today in uh, SPM 2021 and I hope uh, we can uh, meet again in the uh, following uh, conferences like this uh, all over Europe. There are so many mathematical societies and we thank the Portuguese one. Uh, thank you. So uh, yeah, session is dismissed. Hope to see you in next conference. <laughs> Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.